So we're going to talk about the X team this morning. Most of y'all, I'm sure, have heard of the X team. And the X team provides expedited plan review for customers. And we work on projects of all sizes, everything from small to large in commercial and residential. We basically do the same thing that standard plan review does. We kind of take it to a little bit higher level. We're able to provide a little bit more service and do some things that they can't do in standard plan review. So we allow developers, contractors, anyone seeking a building permit to schedule a meeting with our plan review team and with their design team. This allows us to sit down across the table and address any issues that we can identify on the spot, any comments that need to be, or corrections that need to be cleared. And if we can get those resolved through the course of the meeting, get all their fees paid, we can uh, potentially issue their building permit in that one sitting. One of the big perks that we have found that our customers really like about our service is the consistent point of contact. So when they work through the X team, if they have a question or need help, they know who to call. They kind of talk to the same person every time. We're familiar with their project. And that goes from the time they submit their permit all the way through to uh, they get their building final and get their CO. So how our process works is it's basically, the, it starts the same as downstairs. We receive a permit and we perform intake. So Deanna, our customer service rep, she performs intake, checks all the documents. If everything's in order, we open the workflow and the customer's 10 business day review begins. That workflow is opened for both the X team review and all of our alliance partners. That intake, and we, we work real hard to complete that the day the customers apply. If it's not completed that day, like if they apply later in the afternoon, then we definitely have it completed by the next day, the next morning. So we, we get that intake performed definitely no more than 24 hours. Then once the workflow is opened, the X team conference is scheduled. So I contact the customer, I offer them six to eight dates so they can pick a date and time that's convenient for their schedule and their team. And we get their uh, X team meeting on the calendar. We also offer um, expedited plan review without a meeting. This is particularly helpful for small projects or residential projects. Of course, we can certainly do a meeting for a small project or a residential home. But smaller projects and residential homes, lots of times the, the developer, they want to kind of expedite the permit, but they don't want to bring in a whole team. Bringing in a team for a meeting is costly. So they opt to do the review without a meeting. In this situation, as soon as our 10 business day review is completed, we just we supply the comments to the customer. We'll still work with them if they have any questions, but we don't have a formal meeting. We don't really recommend this option for large projects. Um, just because. For a larger project, typically there's more comments, more corrections to be corrected and it's it's better to work through that in a meeting where we can sit down across the table and uh, talk to our customers. So the X team is still meeting via WebEx if the customer is unable to attend in person. Even though we prefer in-person meetings, uh, we still offer a WebEx option and we can also offer a hybrid option. So if they have a combination of in-person attendees and um, maybe some design team members that are out of town and can't travel. It's very costly to travel. So we allow them to do a, a hybrid where we have 
some of both, some people on the phone and some people in our conference room. So some of the projects that we review are single family homes. We've done additions, remodels for single family homes. We've done commercial projects that range anywhere from big high rises to small change of use remodels for maybe a restaurant or a retail uh, business. We've done lots of multifamilies. Um, over the past year, we've done so many tilt wall warehouse storage distribution centers. It's been crazy. And I have selected some projects that were kind of interesting that we've recently worked on. Um, we recently permitted, kind of at the end of the end of last year, we permitted the remodel for the north and south tower of the Sheraton downtown. And then um, at the beginning of this year, they submitted for remodel of their public space. So we weren't able to clear all their comments for the public space in our meeting because the Sheraton was doing some exterior facade upgrades and they had not gone through um, DDRB to get their certificate of appropriateness. So Francisco joined us in our meeting so he could talk to the client about their DDR, DDRB case. And so this is kind of the current facade of the Sheraton. And I don't know if y'all can tell, but this the entrance to the parking garage is kind of right past this tree. And on either side of the entrance, it's it's kind of walled off and closed in. There's some windows, and then there's a wall that comes across the front of the hotel here. And then you have some signage. So the Sheraton worked with DDRB and they got this new facade approved. So they've opened up on either side of the garage entrance and there's still a wall in front, but it's much lower. So it makes the front of the hotel more open and more accessible from the street. And then they've redone some of their signage. They've added this cool kind of outline of Texas here. So by having um, Francisco come and join us for our meeting, he helped him work through to get quick approval for this. And we were able to issue their permit um, just right after they got their DDRB approval. Then we did, a at the end of 2022, we did a big renovation with Northwest High School. And it was kind of interesting because I don't know if y'all are familiar with the main campus in Northwest ISD but their high school is huge. It's been ad, a building that has been added on and changed over the years. And so this remodel pretty much touched every square inch of the building. So it was a really large, complicated uh, remodel. They also had a new addition. They, they were adding a portion, this portion right here to the second floor. So that was kind of interesting because they're also trying to do this work and conduct school. The school wasn't able to close for the whole uh, duration of the project. Uh, then last year in 2022, we um, permitted a new warehouse, an east warehouse for Molson Coors, which is this building right here. But the interesting thing was at the beginning of this year, we permitted a conveyor bridge so I've highlighted it in yellow and it stretches across from their brewery to the uh, west, it goes over several easements, including the railroad. So it's about 30 feet in the air. And then it extends over to the east warehouse. So they had a lot of encroachment issues they had to work through. So we worked real closely with the facilitations group on this one um, to get this conveyor bridge. So as they produce, their product over in the brewery, then they send pallet over across the through the bridge to the warehouse on the east. So that was kind of interesting. And in 22, we did our first cottage community. Um, we actually permitted two different cottage communities last year. So standard at Chisholm had 250 plus permits. 
so that was quite a feat to um, tackle. And um, I will say the kind of the trick <laughs> to a smooth permitting of a cottage community is a very large organized spreadsheet. Um, but we uh, we made it through and got them on their way. The permits consist of cottages, garages, and carports. And then we're currently working on getting HEB uh, permitted. They've been held up a little bit because they're working on a um, encroachment agreement and a CFA. So these things are normally items that are supposed to have been taken care of before the customer comes in and applies for a building permit. But we have kind of opened up and relaxed some of our prerequisites um, because we have so many customers that are wanting to come to us early. We will even do an early plan review. We don't recommend it and we don't prefer it, but the city allows early plan reviews so the X team also does. Um, so, you know, we warn our customers that it kind of creates a hurry up and wait situation and that we cannot issue until plats are recorded and CFAs are executed and recorded and that they still, a lot of them still choose to come to us because they want to shake out all those building code and zoning issues so they can be working and wrapping all those up while they're waiting for their, um, like their encroachments or their CFAs to be completed. I'm particularly anxious for the HEB to get permitted because I live very close to there. And for those of you who have ever shopped at a HEB, it's we're just counting the days till that gets finished. So some of the things that um, have helps the X team work with our customers is we, we can do problem solving by sitting down and meeting across the table in real time talking to our customers um, working our senior plans examiners working one on one with their design team professionals to work through issues that they encounter as they go through their review so whereas in standard plan review if there's something in the plans that doesn't meet code or doesn't meet our city ordinances the plans would be placed in corrections required at the end of the review cycle, you know, the customer would pull the plan review comments and they could see and just read what the comments were. But with the X team, they had that opportunity to sit down and discuss. Because we have the um, design professionals in the room with us, it allows us to where if we have to make a red line to clear the correction, we can do that. Some corrections, you know, it might take a red line, it might take a note. Um, that the design team adds to the plans. Sometimes things can be cleared up just through discussion. Maybe the plans examiner didn't understand what the, the drawings were saying or how it was depicted. Um, sometimes our plans examiners, you know, if we're working on a project that they need clarification for the scope of work, maybe for the use like a warehouse situation, they you know they want to talk through to make sure it's strictly warehousing, it's not going to be production. We can do that through the course of the meeting and get a lot of questions answered right then and there. So we're not having to email back and forth to our customers and phone calls back and forth um, like they have to do in standard plan review. So in 2022, um, we had a, a bumper year. Every year we have increased above from the year before. Um, but in 2022, we received 183 different projects. Now that's projects. So there could be multiple permits per project. So like in the case of Standard at Chisholm had over 250 permits. Um, but we received 183 new projects last year. We issued 573 permits which some of those standard at Chisholm permits actually carried over into um, 2023. The garages and the carports, those all kind of issued after the, the cottages. So that project kind of spanned both years. Um, we completed 136 conferences last year. And we worked with 30 
projects that chose the option B, which is the no meeting option. And at any given time throughout the course of the year, we usually had 150 or a little more prop, uh, permits in process. So we try to get all of our permits wrapped up and completed at the end of that 10 day review cycle when we meet. But we still have a lot of customers that choose to submit a revision after the fact. It's not what we prefer. It kind of goes against our process. We, we want them to bring their laptops and do the work in the meeting. But lots of times our customers choose to go back to their offices, meet, kind of huddle back up with their team and submit a revision after the fact. So that's why we often have a lot of permits that are pending. You know, we've reviewed them, but they're in a waiting client reply and they're awaiting. And some of those could be not just awaiting revisions, but they could be awaiting plat or an encroachment agreement or a CFA because we do take those early plan reviews. So we always have a lot going on with the X team. And we couldn't make it happen without our alliance partners. I've shown a few of them here, but there's so many more that we work with on a daily basis from facilitations and support services who help promote our service. You know, they send us customers all the way to water, sewer, storm water, health. We work with health a lot on a lot of restaurant remodels. Um, contract management, I. In fact, I was down bugging Wendy yesterday because I'm constantly following up to see where our customers are, how close they are to getting their CFA or their encroachment. So we couldn't do what we do without the support of everybody. And so that reaches even beyond development services. So we want to thank everybody for the help y'all give us and keep promoting us so we can keep uh, growing every year. Um, so we have, there's seven of us on the team. So as we move forward, if y'all ever have a customer that needs help, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to contact any of us. If there's anything we can ever do to help all of y'all that give us so much help every day, and we, we're happy to do that. Um, we're looking forward to our new space. <laughs> um, Hopefully the, you know, our new, our conference room that we have right now gets a little echoey when we have um, WebEx uh, hybrid meetings. So we're looking forward to a little better acoustics. Um, but anytime y'all are working with us on a permit and you want to come in and sit and observe one of our meetings, feel free. Um, we'll be happy to help in any way we can. And that's the X team. Thank you so much, Anne. I absolutely loved your presentation. We do have some questions in the chat. So the first question that we have, Anne, is do you make them resubmit the plans with the marked up changes before you stamp the plans? Yes, definitely. So if if they make the changes in the meeting while we're meeting, they have to rebundle and submit a fully compiled plan set. If they make the changes back of their office after the fact, then again, they, they have to submit a fully compiled, corrected plan set before we can um, approve and stamp the plans. All right, our next question is, if the X team only deals with reviewing and issuing for building permits that only allow developer to construct remodel buildings, but do they still follow additional requirements that may be required within parkway space, like street lighting, sidewalks, landscaping, et cetera? And what kind of process is followed at that point as that could require going through IPRC. So if if they have any infrastructure improvements that they're making or um, if they have street trees or pedestrian lights, you know, certain zoning districts require um, as part of enhanced landscaping, they require pedestrian lights. 
they they still have to meet all those requirements and they have to complete if they're going through IPRC or for a CFA or an express CFA that CFA has to be executed before we can issue a building permit so they they are still required and those are all really prerequisites for a building permit so they're supposed to have all that work completed before they come to us but a lot many 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 of our customers don't some of them don't realize they even need pedestrian lights or until they go through the building permit review so that's where we have to kind of pause our process and we work with them to get those other processes completed so then we can move forward with their building permit now if they have sidewalks or curb cuts for their um for their like for their development for their property they still have to get their parkway permits um you know they still they pay their if it's a multifamily they pay their PARD fees through the building permit because PARD reviews our building all the applicable alliance partners review our building permits just like they do in standard plan review and if they need any of those additional permits they still have to complete those processes before we can move forward and issue their building permit our next question is, how long is the review process through the X team? It said so they have a 10 business day review. And that's from the time of their accepted application. So once that intake is completed and the workflow is open, it's a 10 business day review. And our goal is to meet on day 11. But we, I do offer six to eight different dates and times so they can pick a date and time that's convenient for their team. You know, some customers pick a date that's a week or more after their 10 business day review period ends just because it works out better for their team. But we stay on top of our meetings. We don't get backlogged. You know, I have a lot of customers call and say, if I do this, when my review period, the 10 day ends, how long do I have to wait to have my meeting? Well, we stay on, we're able to stay on top of our meetings so we can schedule those. If their team's available, we can schedule them immediately following that 10 business day review. The exception is Mondays and Fridays. We never meet on Fridays. We use that day to catch up on reviews, you know, if our team has appointments, we try to schedule things on Fridays so it doesn't interfere with meetings. Mondays, we typically don't meet on Mondays, but we leave Monday as kind of a buffer day. If we have um, a holiday, like it, especially at Christmas and Thanksgiving, we open up Mondays when our, if our week gets really slammed or you know we use it as kind of a backup day if we've had a um, holiday so monday is kind of a flexible day but typically we 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 have met a couple times on friday but typically we we don't meet on fridays next question do projects have to receive all of their entitlements prior to going through an x team review they are supposed to, yes, but sometimes we don't know they haven't or we don't know that they need them and they haven't done it until we review the project. And that's when we we put a hold on the permit and then we work with them to get those requirements um, satisfied. It's just like the, the Sheridan. When they came and met with us with the um, public space renovation. They had not gone through DDRB to get their exterior facade changes approved. We discovered that in that 10 day review period, and then we started working with the customer and with Francisco. Francisco came to our meeting, um, and that way we could help the customer work through that. Um, I believe we met in January with that customer, they were able to meet with DDRB on like February 4th and get their approval. And as soon as they got their approval, they resubmitted their full plan set with their COA and their stamped approved plans from the DDRB. And then we were able to move forward with their um, issued permit. 
Thank you, Anne. Can buildings with historic preservation components use the X team services? Yes, but they would have to work through Justin's group and get their certificate of appropriateness um, for any, you know, exterior work that um, to make sure that they comply with the requirements for their historical designation. So when we open a workflow, if we have a project that's uh, has a historical designation or is in a historical overlay district, um, then we would open their workflow and they review the permit to make sure that that certificate of appropriateness um, has been approved and is provided for the building permit documents. Next question, why wouldn't everyone want to use the X team? What qualifications or prerequisites would you would cause a customer to use the X team versus the regular process? Well, and I guess one thing I left out of the presentation is one thing that um, we do charge an additional fee, and I didn't talk about that in my presentation. Um, if a customer wants to go through the X team, there is a $200 application fee per permit. And then the review time is $1,000 per hour. So that's the, the one thing that might turn a customer away from the X team is because, you know, not everybody will come through us because it costs more. Um, lots of times we get random permits and uh, people submit to us and you can kind of tell when it's a mistake like we'll get a backyard shed permit <laughs> and so when Deanna does her intake on our permits one of the steps that she performs is she confirms with the customer that they did intend to mark the X team to make sure they understand that there is going to be an additional charge for our service and um, a lot of our customers have previously used the third party, outside third party um, permit contractors to get permits. And what we try to do is we, we try to get that business back to the city. We try to get those customers to, to come through us instead of the third parties. We, we offer the very similar service. It's just we're internal with the city providing that service. Um, a lot of our customers tell us they like coming to us because of the consistency. They always know if they have a question, they know, you know, they can call myself or Deanna. Um, they always have that point of contact. Um, we have dedicated plans examiners on our team. So we have a lot of repeat business from clients. And, you know, once they go through a permit, review with us, they, they kind of know what to expect. You know, they they know if they're in near south side, they're going to have to have ped lights. They know they're, you know, they know they're going to have to, have, if they're building a new building or doing a change of use, they're going to have to have a bike rack. They, they know David's going to be tough on electrical. So they become, you know, it's when they submit plans as as they repeat business and come back to us, typically their plans get better because they know what to expect um, working with the same person. They know what our guys are going to be looking for. We follow all the same codes and ordinances that standard plan review does, but it's something our customers, you know, just like having that personal contact and to be able to sit down and work through the issues. So anybody can come to us, but it's going to cost them more. But Our hopefully next... we're, we're going to, oh, sorry, but hopefully we're going to get them through that process faster. Thank you, Anne. Our next question is, who is your go-to contact for the Express CFA? So typically Tbilisha or, uh, and I think it depends on if it's if they're going through Express CFA for ped lights. I think Debbie Wilhelm is pretty much the person that handles that. Um, I know when I have questions, I, I typically kind of start with Tablicia um, to send them to get started on their IPRC review. 
Um, I work with Wendy a lot in the contract management office. Um, most of our customers that come to us that are going through IPRC, they, they've at least started the process. Um, we do get a few that haven't even started, but most of them, they've at least started the process, but maybe they come to us too early in because they haven't finished the process. Thank you, Anne. We have another question. Are any discounts typically offered for those that want to become small or sig single business owners? Or what of minority owned business? Um, no, the so the X team fees are the same for everyone. It's the we have that two hundred dollar application fee per permit and the review time is a thousand dollars per hour. Um, we do work with a lot of NES approved projects, but NES does not waive X team fees. Um, we've you know we've We've done a projects with Tarrant County, and I know the city has some deals with Tarrant County with building permit fees, but they still pay the X team fees. Um, there's only one project in the four plus years we've been in existence that had X team fees waived, and that they were waived through an MNC that council approved. Um, but everybody else has to pay the X team fees. We've even done some city projects. We've worked with um, one, uh, one of the water treatment plants on some work they did, and they paid the X team fees. All right, thank you, Anne. You did an amazing job on your presentation, so kudos to you.